Welcome. In this module, we're going to take a look at CIS control number 18, application software security, and this is the first part in the module series. For application software security, this is a very, very important area, application software security, and unfortunately, this is one of the areas which is not only very complicated because software is developed and it's code, it's the intellectual property of a programmer, and it's harder to secure uh, software because it's not like a router or a switch or a firewall or a server which, is, uh, which, has, which has a fixed configuration, let's say on Windows Server 2012 R2, or it's a Cisco server or a Cisco switch, and we know exactly how to harden it. Uh, code it, uh, is, is a mechanism of, there's a mechanism of writing code, and there can be a lot of vulnerabilities in the practice of writing the code. And it's just like handwriting, that every user has a unique way of handwriting and in order to secure the programming language or the code of the software application, it's uh, much more difficult to do and it's a complete process and let's take further detail. This is the layout for version seven CIS controls and we're now in CIS control number 18, application software security. And these are the mechanisms we will use, secure coding standards, education plans and training plans, code analyst systems for code reviews, and web application firewalls, for example, or WAF systems. Control 18.1. Now, Control 18.1 tells us establish secure coding practices. Now, this is very important because when we are trying to secure the application software security or trying to implement application software security, we first need to establish the secure coding practice or the secure coding standard. Now, if you're developing in Java or PHP, or Perl language, or ASP.NET, um, whatever language or platform you're developing in, we need to go and find the coding standard or the control set which we're going to follow in order to harden uh, the code or implement uh, the uh, secure coding practice or secure coding um, in our environment. So to establish secure coding practices, we need, we need to establish secure coding practices appropriate to the programming language and development environment being used. So we need to pick up a control set and for example, the Software Engineering Institute, SEI of Carnegie Mellon Institute, um, they have a lot of control sets, a lot of great control sets for Java and C++ and uh, C language and for example, Perl, and they, they have these control sets for secure coding practices all sitting there and with examples of insecure code and a secure code and how to secure the code properly. So we need to go and find the control set and that would form the coding practice or the coding standard which we're going to, which we're going to follow. And the particular challenge is that we were mentioning that this code has been written by a person, by a human being, and it's not like a Windows Server 2012 machine on which we need to go and harden the machine. That's very easy to do or configuring a router, a hardening a router is much easier but uh, when we're trying to secure the code, it's much more difficult. Ensure explicit error checking is performed for all in-house developed software. Now this is control 18.2. For in-house developed software, ensure that explicit error checking is performed and documented for all input, including for size, data type, and acceptable, acceptable ranges of formats. And the reason for this is that this becomes the doorway for SQL injection attacks or other types of attacks when you have not done the uh, proper explicit error checking um, for all input, uh, including, as we mentioned, for size, data type, acceptable ranges and formats. 18.3, verify that acquired software is still supported. Verify that the version of all software acquired from outside, uh, you could have bought it, you could have bought it online, it could have been uh, sold to you from a third party, it could be relying on certain database or certain uh, framework, and all of that needs to be supported. Uh, verify that the version of all software acquired from outside your organization is still supported by the developer or appropriately hardened based on developer security recommendations. So that's all very important, and sometimes what happens is that a website, for example, has been developed uh, three years ago, and once you run a pen test, uh, we're still looking for the developer who developed the website, and you cannot find the uh, developer. 
and the developer is supposed to fix the vulnerabilities which have been identified in the pen test. And it's very important to have maintenance contracts with your third party uh, developers as well. 18.4, only use up-to-date and trusted third party components. So only use up-to-date and trusted third party components for the software developed by the organization, which means libraries and different uh, other types of utilities that we're going to use. Those should all be uh, trusted and you should actually look for vulnerabilities uh, on Google before deploying them um, because these are usually published. And uh, what's going to happen is that if there are vulnerabilities in the libraries or utilities which you need to in embed into your software, then you're by, by very definition, your software is also going to be insecure. That's all that we have for this module. Thank you.